Mass Timber is a new material that's coming to market for structural engineers. So I have to admit, as a structural engineer, I'm just really excited about a new material to explore. It is a tremendous savings of embodied carbon over conventional systems. It's a renewable resource, and you get to build the building a lot faster than you can with standard materials like concrete and steel. We designed labs with two basic functions in mind. First, we're worried about what it is that the people inside are trying to achieve. But even more importantly, we're really focused on the safety and the health and wellness of the occupants. So we're designing features to mitigate any kind of hazard that might be in the lab. Anytime we start in the International Building Code, we have to look at the occupancy type and the fuel loads, and that determines both what we're allowed to do from a construction type perspective and how the building can be laid out with respect to egress. Anytime we have higher occupant loads, we want to be closer to the exits, we want to have more exits, we want to have a shorter building, or we want to provide more protection by means of the construction type. If we want to go really tall, really wide with a building, we want to make sure that it's going to be resilient to fire so that people can have enough time to escape. Lab and life science buildings are just bigger than other spaces, and that's to provide for the functionality and also the safety in the lab environment. The planning dimension that we use is an 11-foot module. That's to provide for the lab benches on either side of a 5-foot aisle for safety. There are a few unique aspects of laboratory buildings that structural engineers have to consider. One of the primary aspects is that of floor vibrations. There are a number of requirements for particular types of equipment, and they set limits on the maximum peak velocities that the floor system would exhibit under excitation. There are several ways to mitigate them, primarily mass, stiffness, and damping of the system. We have to assess where is that piece of equipment and measure what is the peak velocity that that piece of equipment would experience. As a structural engineer, I'm thinking to myself, my beam spans can be on some module that is 11 feet, 22 feet, or 33 feet. Generally speaking, the structural engineer is looking at 22 and 33 foot spans. Now, the longer the beam, the more susceptible it is to floor vibrations. In mass timber buildings, we'd love to expose all the wood structure in the space. But in lab buildings, we have a lot of MEP systems that have to run through the ceiling. So we tend to work with an open ceiling aesthetic that feels more like a loft, where, yeah, you can see the pipes and wires in the ceiling, but they're neatly organized in a grid. And we try to expose as much of the wood as possible above that, so you have a feeling of that wonderful wood ceiling above it all and coming down in the columns within the space. Hazardous materials are top of mind for anybody that's in a lab. It's one of those things in mass timber specifically that you really need to be cognizant of what your program is and where it's going in the building and what protection you're providing against those. So normally in lab environments, the predominant concern we have is flammable solvents, flammable liquids. But certainly in labs, we're always looking at these protection methods like secondary containment, like ventilation, non-combustible finishes on floors. The great thing about mass timber is that it works really well with conventional materials like concrete and steel. I particularly like the mass timber hybrid system of CLT decking and steel framing. You get to take advantage of the much longer span capabilities of steel framing while also minimizing the floor depth and still mitigating those floor vibrations for sensitive equipment. We tend to think of labs as this white, sterile environment filled with metal and glass. And to be able to have wood just transforms the space in a tremendous way. People who work in labs, they work long hours, and to have that ergonomic benefit and the transformative feel of the space is really amazing. There's definitely a lot of great technical information on what's available for engineering literature. There's also a lot of great information in the NFPA standards about just general fire safety and hazardous materials. So the world that I live in, NFPA 30 for flammable liquids, NFPA 45 for laboratories. Mass timber has really taken off in labs and we're seeing a real transformation with many architecture firms working with mass timber in labs for the first time. Our journey really started with the MSU project, the Michigan State STEM project. Using Woodworks as resources was really helpful to us. <laughs> this YouTube channel is especially useful, but there are many different guides. There's a recent vibration design guide for timber, which has really been helpful to us. One of the things we discovered was that mass timber was much more applicable to a teaching lab space, a teaching lab building, than we had anticipated that indeed the structural bays that are available are broader than we had anticipated, that you can actually get very good 
vibration suppression with a mass timber frame building, especially with multi-ply CLT decking and a concrete topping. We were very excited to see how quickly mass timber could be assembled on site. It actually happens more quickly than steel. It does take more upfront planning and work, but it goes together extremely smoothly. There was actual cost savings just in the labor of assembly, which is really exciting. Switching to mass timber in and of itself reduced the embodied carbon content for the building structure by at least 50%. And then there was the added benefit of sequestering carbon. In the 3,000 square meters of CLT and glue land in this building, we were able to sequester over 1,800 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. In laboratories, there used to be this knee-jerk feeling like, oh, it's a lab, it can't be made out of wood. Now it's entirely possible for many different kinds of labs to make the entire building out of wood. We've obviously shown that you can build teaching laboratory buildings in mass timber. We know there are examples of more and more research laboratories that are being built in mass timber where reduced vibration in floors is extremely important and it can be achieved with mass timber. I love the embodied carbon aspect of mass timber and the fact that it's a renewable resource. If we're going to achieve net zero embodied carbon structural systems by 2050, mass timber has to be a big part of the equation. The structural system itself is responsible for over 50% of the embodied carbon of all new buildings. So as structural engineers, we have a responsibility and a great opportunity to make those initial design decisions. Don't be afraid of this material. This material is a really exciting new material that you get to play with every day and you can propose different mass timber systems for most of the buildings that you're designing right now. Considering wood? Ask us anything.